Okay, we're going to get this meeting started. Is everybody a baseball fan? So uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Please rise for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call, please. Mayor Cabadas. Here. Mrs. Passino. Here. Mr. Robinson. Here. Mr. Farrell. Here. Mrs. Kelly. Here. Mr. Sapiro. Here. Mr. Long. Here. Mr. Basor. Here. And Mr. Strelly. Here. A public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given by the clerk of the following matter. One posted on the bulletin board in the borough clerk's office on January 5th, 2023. And two emailed to the retrospective current post on January 5th, 2023. Um, we're going we're to skip this agenda just a little bit. We're going to go right to our uh, resolution appointing um, the conditional redevelopment authorization, ex ex authorizing execution of memorandum of understanding. Emily, you want to please come up and sure. this way you can uh, speak first. And then we'll ask Mr. Richards uh, his, his group to come up with that program. You first and then. Um, by the way, uh, you know, um, with regard to Emily Gibbons, Jennifer Emily Gibbons, uh, redevelopment houses for the Lord Carl. Um, we're here tonight to um, explain uh, the resolution that's on your agenda this evening for um, authorizing a conditional redevelopment with um, 195, 195 Romney Associates Urban Renewal, and that's for a warehouse project in uh, the business park. This council adopted a redevelopment plan in May um, with regard to this particular project. Uh, this memorandum of understanding is to authorize uh, the... Excuse me, Emily, is the microphone working? Is everybody hearing? I don't think he's working. Here, you just push that button. I don't think he's working. Push that button. There you go. Sorry. Um, so uh, this memorandum of understanding establishes an escrow to cover the costs that the borough would incur in development of the redevelopment plan, negotiation of the actual redevelopment agreement between the borough and the redeveloper, and also um, negotiation and um, basically papering the financial agreement, the long-term tax exemption pilot agreement that um, has been negotiated with the redeveloper. Um, this is the first step. Next would come a, an actual redevelopment agreement that would be entered into between the borrower and the redeveloper, and then a financial agreement. And that financial agreement uh, will establish the program for the 30-year payment in lieu of taxes. That is an ordinance, so you would have to have an introduction, and then you will have that, just like you do any other ordinance, introduction, publication, notice of public hearing, and then you would come back for a public hearing and adoption. So I'm like, you want to go over the timeline so everyone knows that we would do the, the next step would be the ordinance at the next So the next step, meeting. yeah, would, hopefully we'll have an ordinance um, and an agreement in, ready for a council to review, um, and you could introduce that at your next regular council meeting. Uh, this is your caucus meeting. This is caucus. Yes. Yeah, so, so we have November 28th. Or we have November 8th. When do you think we'll be? So, uh, Mr. Verdona and I will try our level best to get the agreement in shape for you to have it introduced on November 8th. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, if we cannot do that, then we will definitely have it by the end of November. Uh, and then you will do your, your publication in accordance with law. I think it's 10 days that it has to be between the meetings, between the end of November and the beginning of December Is that meeting. Just 10 days or 30? I was talking 30 days. It's only 10 days? Uh, what, what, kind of an, what kind of an ordinance is it? It's it's a financial agreement, um, but it, it is not a bond ordinance. So it's probably only 10 days. 10 days. So 10 days. So we could do November 8th and then November 20th. You could. Okay. Yes, they rest it. Uh, so, but if we get in at November 28th, uh, I don't know when you work. Yeah, I can see the next meeting. meeting. Uh, or, or your uh, regular council meeting is in. December 5th, yeah. and it won't make, there won't be 10 days between those two. No, okay. no, so we'll try to get it for the 8th of November so that everything's completed. You have to complete within the calendar year, so yes. um, we can't introduce in December and adopt in January. Uh, so this will be the next steps. Um, this evening, again, this resolution and this agreement, the uh, memorandum of understanding is to appoint 195 as a conditional redeveloper to establish that escrow. Um, and then they can get moving and we can get all the agreements negotiated and, and back to council for your review and approval. Okay, great. Any questions? 
No questions? You guys are great. Okay. Uh, Mr. Richards, you want to come up at this point? At least explain. Liz, Gary, did you want to preface anything first or just let the... Okay. No. Some so some members of the board were on the planning board, and Mr. Knight, myself, and Mr. Loppenstein, but the other board members are familiar with what's going on, but explain everything. Um, okay, listen, I had a whole thing prepared, but I realized that I just threw it in. I'm not going to watch that. We appreciate that. Really? Look at all that. Yeah, come on, you know. You can email it to me, and I'll... Uh, I will, okay. Make it to the um, <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I'm David Richards. I represent 195 Runnymede Associates Urban Renewal LLC. Um, Teacher, we just call ourselves Richards and Robbins. Real short history, 1988 was when we first appeared here in, in Burrell Hall to, uh, uh, we just purchased the uh, 60 acre site. Uh, we were the developers of that site. Um, since that time, we put up seven uh, Warehouse industrial flex buildings. Um, we have over the years um, established 30, uh, roughly about 30 different tenants um, that came to the park, that have stayed in the park, that have brought themselves and their employees to this town. Um, and that is the town a little bit. Uh, we also extended 9th Avenue all the way after Clemens Ridge Road. We installed the traffic light. We did a bunch of improvements. We, you know, we um, and in uh, 2020, um, we had sold the actual Running Corporate Center, but so we retained this one lot. And this is the lot that we are going to um, hopefully be constructing a building on. I would like to say one thing, though. Um, I, want, I, I really have to acknowledge with gratitude. For you know, we've been at, we've been actually at this for about 35 years, um, and Running It has been a true partner in the development of the park from the early days of Mayor Dave Vanella to uh, today's administration headed by Mayor Nick. Um, the cooperation, your assistance, your support has enabled us to not only make the Running It corporate uh, corporate center a reality, but a true corporate and business park. Thank you for that help. Okay, as you know, we have received all state and local approvals. Well, go. All state and local approvals, including site plan to build an 80,030 square foot uh, building. Uh, it's a state of the art warehouse located on this site at the end of Ninth Avenue, just before it makes the turn to head to Clarence Ridge Road. Um, this is the front of the building. Obviously, this is the rear loading. This is the area that the public will be seeing as they drive around the park. This is the 175 building. So this building, this new building, is, is located um, continuously in the same line as the 155 building, the 175 building, the 195 building. Okay. This area of the building, um, the public is not really going to see because they're really only going this way. Um, probably see the whole facade of the building, maybe a little bit around the edge, around the corner. This is all being finished off, and it's going to hopefully look something like, like this. Oh, oh that's it's beautiful. That's We actually think that this is going to be the nicest building Potentially 14 spaces 
that we could have 14 different tenants. However, it's not really in the best interest of us or um, or even the town to have 14 smaller tenants in here. We're really looking for four 20,000 foot tenants, ideally two 40,000 foot tenants, perfect world, one tenant for the entire building. But we had to design it so that we could have 6,000 foot units, because that's how the steel lays out, that's how the, the dimension of the, uh, the side lays out. Um, so how much, like, if, 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 you, if you do it like this, yes, this how, one, one, but say you sell two units, 10,000, that's not much. Okay. <laughs> I wish I could control it. No, no, no. It's, he, he made it as big as the, the lot will yeah. allow. Yeah. The planning board has already approved this. This is a permitted use. Mm -hmm. We're only here basically to approve this agreement. Oh, I love it. I love yeah. it. Mrs. Yeah. Kelly, do me a favor. Just take in the information, all right? <laughs> Let's take it in. We, we have been um, informally talking with some potential um, users of the building. And the size range we're coming up with seems to be 20 to 40,000 foot users. So we're hopeful that that's where it's going to go. We, we talked about at the planning board about the uh, one thing was the parking. Just yes. get rid of one out. So this is an older site plan, older one when in the fact that it's not exactly what was approved, but you know, we had it all colored up and stuff before we were doing that. This parking area over here. This overflow parking, we're not going to be um, building at this point. And these cars, we're actually going to be putting in along the back. The reason we're doing that is we're going to preserve as much of this area in, uh, for trees and, and, and um, in its natural state as we can. We have cleared the extent of the site right now that we expect to clear. We're hoping to keep this as a buffer a lot because we have Runson House over here. We're trying to be um, um, sensitive to, to their, their <laughs> needs. Kind to them, yes. And uh, even though we can develop this and we could develop this under the ordinance, we decided that we'll back off and we'll try to make do with parking along the back here. So we're trying to leave that. Uh, but they do need that area. He has every right to. If we do need that area, we're gonna we have the right already to, to um, take the uh, you know to clear it and put parking there. We are going to try not to do that. Part of the nice thing about having larger tenants instead of smaller is your parking requirements overall are probably going to be less, and we're hopeful that that's going to work out that way. So we're not going to work. And what's over here in the blue area? That's retention ponds. So the water has to stay on the property. It doesn't go into our stormwater system. In other words, when this property is fully developed, no, no more water is going to run off site than currently runs off in its natural state. The turnpike's right behind it. We have to have your yeah, turnpike yeah. way back here. Yeah. 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 We can't even take much advantage of the retention pond we built for the rest of the park. Even though this retention pond was sized for all the buildings in the park, regulations have changed. Oh, big time. Have changed, big time. And so now we have to have on site retention. Um, and like I said, this has already been approved by the planning board. Yes. We're just uh, here for the like, second read call. That's gorgeous. Wow. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think this is going to be uh, That's the best looking building in Burson, my way. That's the best looking building we've ever built. Thank you. Um, and we didn't mean to cut you short, but we appreciate you no, giving no, us no, the no, rich no, version. No, no, no. Trust me, I'm very well <laughs> made with this. So, I do want to say, in closing, uh, with your support, we believe we can pull off, we can pull this off, okay, fine. Um, we have a good team that we've assembled, uh, contractors, architects, engineers, attorneys, uh, and we're, we're going to get this thing going. Um, but I will say that I'm excited to be back here. It's been a number of years. I spent many an evening here, um, and I am happy to spend this one here, too. Now that I'm done, I got the game on in my car radio and I wouldn't mind listening to it. Okay. Right. No, I'm serious. If you have any questions, please. Any any questions? I'm happy. Was there anything else to your presentation with that? Because that's pretty much showed us what's going on. I believe our legal counsel has told us what's going on. 
Gary, did you want to add anything? I mean, we do have to thank Mr. Pasanente because he's the one who's really helped us put this together. Yes. And, um, you know, and, and, and our, the lawyer's getting it all done. So what council intends to do, and my job is to just, uh, you know, ferry this across. So as long as you give me the information, I'll get it on the agenda. We'll get it done before our deadline at the end of this year. Okay. We're committed to taking it down. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Much appreciated. So then we're going to go right on to our, our ordinances then. Uh, excuse me, our resolutions this evening. So we're going to start with the first one. Resolution 23-127 is a resolution authorizing the shared service agreement between the Power Bonnet and the Cheney County Improvement Authority. Participation in the county registration program for abandoned properties. This is the one that we were doing for years. Uh, it's a new company. We're staying with the county. Uh, would someone like to make a motion? I'll make that motion. Right, motion by Ms. Kelly, second by Mr. Locke. Roll call, please. Mr. Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Lawless. Yes. Mr. Sebastian. Yes. Mr. Sebastian. Yes. Mr. Yes. Brown. Yes. And that resolution is adopted. Resolution 23-128 is a resolution appointing conditional redeveloper and authorizing ex execution of the memorandum of understanding. So this is what we just talked about. This authorizes me to sign. Would someone like to make a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion by Mr. Lonestein, second by Mr. Farrell. Roll call, please. Mr. Farrell. Yes. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mr. Lonestein. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. And Mr. Sekiro. Yes. All right, that resolution is adopted. Uh, resolution 23-129 is a resolution approving a change order for Earl Asphalt Company, First Avenue. This was the drainage? No. Well, yeah, yeah X4 drainage improvements, and then we're also doing additional curb on First Avenue. Oh. This is Mr. Brooks' property. They'll talk to you again. So. All right, would someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Oh, second. Motion by Mr. Farrell, second by Mr. Lobenstein. Roll call, please. Mrs. Pazio? Yes. Mr. Lobenstein? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Sapiro? Yes. All right. Uh, we're going to walk another one on this evening. Uh, I did talk to everyone, but I think Mr. Sapiro, so I apologize. Uh, I, I might have said briefly. So 23130 will be uh, our CFO, uh, Shelly, as everyone knows. She's our compliance officer. So one of the things that was important, we need to appoint her as our compliance officer tonight. Uh, no, I'm making fun. So, but I will say, she has always stepped up, and even today in our meeting with this huge sewer project, which is a $6.4 million project, uh, Shelly, uh, she got the financing, she worked with our attorneys, other attorneys, Parker McKay, to get the, uh, the financing done, she's worked with Gary with this. Just to give you guys an example, that agreement that we just made with that, for that pilot, um, comparing it to previous pilots, the Runson House pilot, we got $0. The best work industry for the blind, we got 5,000 a year. This pilot program is worth $3 million to the borough. Over the next 30 years, the borough will reap the rewards of, of having a redevelopment pro, uh, program that the, that the developer is willing to develop, and the borough uh, is going to, you know, in the first year, we're going to bring in about uh, $75,000, and then every year after that, it goes up, you know, kind of the way our taxes go up. And then in the last five years, it goes up to ramp up to what actual value is. Now, 30 years from now, like I said, it's a long time from now. But for us, in the year, he intends to be done by October of 2024. So by October of 2024, we'll have a warehouse there and, and, and start to reap some of this financial uh, benefit. As you can see, not only did we do this uh, uh, agreement, we were smart enough to have any costs reimbursed to us. So the attorney that was here for this was uh, Mr. Malley's uh, firm. Uh, Emily represented, she, she works for him, or she's a partner. Uh, her fees, Gary's fees, any money that we've spent has, is, is getting recouped. So the borough, because we're doing this, uh, this agreement, we didn't encumber any cost, except for the fact of the work that's being done by council, our, our staff, and, and Mr. Trailer to get this done. Um, obviously, you know, payroll's changed. So payroll changed this, this year. We've now gone all electronic at this point. It's not perfect, but it's, it's much better than, than what we had. At least we can know we add better. We don't add incorrectly anymore with the computer. So I'm making a recommendation. Um, Shelly's current salary is, and this is a public meeting, so current, I can talk about you, right? You're giving me permission? Well, uh, 
tell you what your salary is because that's public information. Okay. You avoid without a rice notice. I didn't rice notice yet. So I didn't give a proper notice to do this this evening. But the CFO's current salary is 96000 a year. Uh, in context, you know what other people in the borough make. Uh, I'm making a recommendation that we move her to 110, which encompasses all these other things. She's taking on this other role. We're not formally appointing her that role in case something changes, in case Bayshore has to yeah, take it over. Bayshore has to take it over. But um, so ordinance, uh, or excuse me, resolution 23-130 will be the increase of salary for the CFO for the year 2023. This will be retro because she's been doing this job for the entire year. I just failed, and I'm going to blame Mr. Ranieri too. Uh, and I did talk to him, and he was all supportive of this, and uh, to do this for retroactive for the year uh, with this salary of 110. Any other discussion? Would someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Motion by Mr. Longstein, second by Ms. Passio. Roll call, please. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Lobenstein. Yes. And Mr. Farrell. Yes. Mrs. Kelly. Wonderful. And yes. Mr. Sapiro. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. The resolution is adopted. Sorry it took me 10 months to get it done. I apologize. But uh, I will say that it's important for people to stand up for themselves and tell us what we need to do because sometimes we don't always listen. You need to listen. Okay. We'll get on with the meeting. Um, new business for discussion. Public hearing uh, for ordinance 2312. Joyce, I don't have any of this in front of me, so no, you got to help me. It's, it's the uh, sewer, uh, changing the sewer ordinance to include the, uh, the fee for the application. So the idea, once again, since Pat, you're here and Harry's here, is we've got new homes being built, we have uh, buildings being built. That $250 is to cover your cost to go out there and review the application. So the $250 is for you to review it. You can approve it or deny it, that's what the 250 is for. The connection fee doesn't change. That's per ordinance, we're not changing that. We realize though that you guys were doing the work and there's no guarantee that the project was moving forward, so you know, we basically took it from someone else. So that's what that is. So we'll, we'll finalize this at the next meeting. This is for everything. You know, what's been, in the past, what we would do is we would only really go out and do the inspection when there was a street opening permit. Well, that was improper. By that point, they're already at a street opening. We needed to make sure that the sewer line was, was correct, you know, and all that other stuff. But it was really evident with the 96 townhomes. So with the 96 townhomes, you're more likely only to get one application for 250, but we're gonna get 90, 12, uh, 96, $1,200 uh, fee connections. So I think that's fair. You know, we can review that. And plus the engineer does, does do the inspections for all the uh, sewer lines, and then we'll make sure the connections are correct. Um, same thing with this this, uh, this industrial building. Same thing with um, the apartment complex. I did get word that the apartment complex on uh, Clemensburg Road is back on the table. Oh, wonderful! Uh, it's under agreement to sale. The original applicant who came in and got approved sold her her um, approval. As long as council, I don't, there's no objections. I think from council, you know, we waived the the timeline, gave them more time because of the circumstances to get this done. So she's supposed to be going to settlement and starting that process. Um, proposal tree removal and replacement ordinance. You know, there's been some discussion, but once again, remember, we have to get things done by the end of this, this year, or we have to table it to next year. This is mandated. This is mandated. There's some concerns, but one thing I'll say about anything we do is if we find that we made a mistake, we can fix it. If we see that something's wrong in the ordinance, we can tweak it. Uh, but moving forward with the ordinance, getting it started, and both this ordinance and the bamboo ordinance, Dan, do you want to at least explain to everyone, even though we have uh, mechanisms to enforce it, what are the rights of the... Sure, so everybody maintains their due process rights. It's not something where we can just you know, send a bill, you violated our ordinance, here you go. Um, we would get the ever-living you-know-what suit out of us as a result of that. So it would be any borough ordinances have the jurisdiction in our municipal court, and that would be the enforcement proceedings. And be clear there's um, you know these are our guidelines I can tell you uh, one thing that I'm fine deleting is any mention of imprisonment because we're not imprisoning anybody for overgrown bamboo that's just set standard so we would have to re-advertise we just delete that one line. We know. Okay. well if that's a recommendation from the I, I didn't know it said imprisonment wait, wait, wait a minute. you don't have to re-advertise anything who said that 
I just said. He, he just said. We're talking. Line. We're talking about the bamboo order. We're talking about bamboo. If we amend one line and get rid of any reference to possible imprisonment, which is look standard for an ordinance, just to give the option if somebody is such a repeat offender that it's time and time and time and time and time again. You would have the option to do that, but it would never really happen. But if we just delete that line, we would not have to re-advertise the bamboo ward. Well, but if you advertised it to be heard two months ago, I'm saying we have to advertise it now to be heard. Sure. Well, so we're still going to have to advertise. We still All right. Right. Okay, then fine. Yeah. But let's take out the word in prison. I'll agree with that. No, yeah, that's fine. And uh, is there a way for you to do a synopsis since it was, it was very expensive to advertise? There's always a way for me to well, do a just, synopsis. Just right. synopsis. So, so I will uh, make that amendment. I'll do the synopsis to keep our vaunted municipal clerk, myself, in her good graces, which is always sure. a good place Same to be. Um, yeah, so if we, if we do all that, any objections? Also, is the tree ordinance large? I don't have it in front of me. At least I don't it's think it's large. Any time you have an ordinance that needs a synopsis, I can do that synopsis. How about the tree ordinance? Joe? I will do a synopsis of the tree ordinance. Sounds good. That's your other title. So when are we going to pass those ordinances? When are we get them on the? So the plan is to, is to do this in the November or December. If I get it done by the end of the year, the tree ordinance we have to advertise and have a second. No, we still get it the done. bamboo we can do in November, what, as long as we we change or we might have to advertise before we do the bamboo. In the essence, are we doing a first reading again for bamboo? So what am I advertising? I'll draft this into this a new public hearing. It passed first reading, correct? Yes. And I'll end the synopsis. Here's the second reading. Second reading has the synopsis. So, 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 so we'll get I will send so we'll you get exactly to see the final ordinance. Yes. So I'll get to see the final ordinance. Yeah, of course. I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you first. And then call me if you have any. Right, we're going to get this done. Oh, uh, I just have a question sure. about the tree ordinance. Um, what department is this going to go through? So if you, if, if you read the ordinance, one of the things that it says is that the borough still, now we have to get an, a, um, an arborist to help us with this. So we're just going to have to, once we get the ordinance, I hate to say it, we're going to have to figure it all out. You know, one of the things that happened this evening that I'll let you know is we've made some changes already this evening, the way C, COs are being done in the other town. Uh, with the chief's help, we're adjusting how we're doing that to streamline that. And I'll bring that up in the next uh, council meeting, hopefully before the end of the year. Um, and then we start looking at this because we have now responsibilities with trees and now we have responsibilities with lead-based paint. So we have a few more responsibilities and you are right, we're going to need people to do this and people to supervise this. I'm not saying it's responsible to the chief of police, but at his point he's helping us out. Everything but, <laughs> you know, he's helping us and I, and, and like I said, he's doing a lot, but once we maybe get these things moving, we can start to figure out our future. Who's going to do all these things? Because there is a need to do all these type of inspections. Um, all right, let's, we'll keep going. So proclamation from Women's Club. John will do the inspections. There you go. And, it's, and you know what? It, it's true. We, we are going to need people who are certified housing inspectors, certified lead inspectors. That arborist, I think, is a little more complicated. We got these, an arborist at the fire. But these are these are the kind of things that, that we need. We got an arborist. You know, um, we have an arborist at the fire. But well, where were you when we needed an arborist on uh, at such as? Uh, Oh, is he the arborist? Why? All right, all right. But we're going to need to appoint people to do these different things, and you're 100 percent right. We have to have the forms ready. You know, I didn't even realize about this sewer thing until we got an application for 96 townhomes. When was the last time we had an application for 96 homes? In 33 years? Never. Never. So we weren't prepared for that. But I agree, we have to get our, our act together with this kind of stuff. Um, the proclamation, so next meeting, so everyone's aware, we're going to have the meeting an hour earlier. It's at 5 o'clock. So that myself On the and Ms. Kelly will go to this. Uh, we have an anniversary for the Women's Club. We all got to invite. Oh, they know they can all come with me. Time. Everybody's invited. Okay, good. So then we'll, we'll do our meeting and we'll go to the 70th. November 28th. November 28th. It's an hour. It's now five o'clock. Yeah, we're all. Yeah. 
And then the November 8th meeting is, has been advertised. So our next council meeting is a Wednesday because of election day. Yeah, great. Uh, Halloween curfew hours, we've already agreed to that. Um, so that's already done. Why is that still the agenda? Because I thought you would want to remind everybody. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I'll let if anybody wants to talk. So Halloween curfew hours have already been discussed. Discussion of best practice, sir. Did we do that in the last meeting? No, we have to do it now. We want to just briefly discuss it. Okay, I would just tell everybody what the points were. We had a score of 41. Out of? Honestly, I don't know. 40. But 41 was enough to get 100% of our 80? Yes. Maybe they get 30 or 60. So part of the application is we have to say that we discussed it. So why don't you point out well, a, few, a few quick points, like they did talk about the lead uh, ordinance. That we have to have a lead certified. The lead, is, the lead has been a primary point the last two years. However, it does end up being unscored this year. Next year, I anticipate it being scored. And the state's willing to give us some money to implement this program. They so are. we now have basically one year to get this done, to get the, the lead thing under control. What else do we need to score? Get good on a bad one. Right? Um, it was all sent to everyone. Everyone got a copy of it. Can we at least all say on the record? We saw it. Yes, we all saw it. Yeah. All right. We only lost one point. We lost one point. Uh, I thought it was wonderful. Thank yeah. you, Chef. Yeah. Okay, what was the one point? Oh, no. I don't remember. Length of workshop. Length of. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. So at least we could say so you can, we could say we discussed it. We discussed the best practices. Discussion of liability insurance for businesses and rentals. Uh, the attorney uh, advised me that we should probably wait until next year for this. Uh, we're not obligated to do it, but once again, this becomes who's going to enforce it. What it's basically saying is that the town now becomes responsible to make sure that businesses have insurance, and, which is insane. Wow. You businesses know, and yeah. rental property. And rental property. So if you have a rental property in town, it becomes, our, if we do this, it becomes our responsibility to make sure you have insurance. Well, no, that's not true. Okay, it so is our responsibility regardless. They have to register with us. And so, so we already do a rental liability registration. We do that. Cur we do a business registration. Right. So it would be under that. So realm. What, what we would have to do is amend our ordinance to say that when, we, when people register their business in town or register their, 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 their they, they have to provide the insurance. Well, what we Correct? do, yes, that's half of it. But the other half is if you want to charge an administrative fee because it is an extra burden, that of course is what I would call an unfunded mandate from the state. But they're letting us charge a fee. They're letting us charge a fee, but we have to have an ordinance to do so. Mm -hmm. So before we send out the landlord renewals. I already have it in, in the business, business license. license. What about landlord registration? So what he's saying is, uh, Dan, am I correct? You're saying that we also have to ask for the landlords to provide us insurance. Correct. They're now, right. we're not additionally insured or anything like that. They're we're just not. proving us that they That's have correct. Insurance. They just as part of that, they have to prove their, I think it's $500,000. Oh, so so before, right? before we send out these landlord Requests. It would be basically the same letter that I have. Same letter, but at the bottom, please send us a copy of your cert certificate of insurance. Yeah. And when are okay. we starting this? Not until next year? Well, well, the beginning. well, we either have to get it done before the end of this year, so before we send out our letters. And then we have to decide if we want to change the fees. I mean, I'm not, I'm not inclined to change the fee right away. It's already 50 bucks for the business license. Yeah. And we don't worry. For the I don't know any business that doesn't have a, that doesn't have a charge. The landlord thing, oh, I can't imagine surprised. the landlord that doesn't have insurance. You'd be surprised. I'd be surprised? Yeah. So it's the landlord that has to provide the insurance, not the tenant? It's the landlord. The property. You wanted to change the application? Then we'll oh, she already, she already did one. The business license application is ready to go with the new stuff on it. Great. But the landlord would just be equal to having another line to it. Exactly. And, it's the same and if we're not changing part. the fee, yeah. I'd say we could just send that, but you think we still need an ordinance to enforce it. You can, in order to charge the fee, you need the ordinance. If you don't, well, it help justifies the fee we already charge. We already charge the fee. I don't think it's any more work to make sure there's a, a certificate. No, when they submit their complete application, they have it's to in, include that. Okay. So that fifty bucks includes that they show that we have the insurance. Well, what about the landlord tenant now? How do you want to handle that? I think they have to submit at the same time. So this, but I don't think we need this to language the would go. I'll put a letter for it. Along with the land, the tent land, the tent. All right. So at this point, you don't think we need to do the ordinance. You don't. You never needed to. Okay. 
if, if you want. So we're going to cross that out. It's a local finance. It's a local finance. Okay. To ask, but we don't have to charge a fee. Only if we want to. All right, we can see if it costs us a lot of time. Uh, discussion of amending fees for subdivisions and lot consolidations. So one of the problems that uh, back in, uh, in 2009, we passed an ordinance, it was the first ordinance I ever passed, was we were supposed to collect $75 every time a, a property owner subdivided. And the reason was our uh, tax maps have to be updated to show subdivisions and lot consolidations. We've, we've done it a little bit, but we haven't done it as much as possible. Our engineer just gave us a quote to update our maps, and that's, those fees should have been collected. Now, some stuff we did on our own when we gave land away to people. Do you remember, like, say, the land behind Yakni? Or, yeah. Or we got rid of the street, we got rid of a part of Denmark. But um, the fees should be either taken out of uh, planning board escrow, because that's part of the planning board application to do the subdivision or the consolidation. But we're going to have to come up with money. So the only thing I, I could say is we need to amend this to at least cover our costs. If someone wants to subdivide their property or consolidate their property, they should um, pay for it. What do you think that should be now? I mean, we were 75 back in 2009, a 150 in this age. So what we're going to do is amend that to 150. I, I think it was a, the scale power so if there was a right. Okay. How many there was, so there were 96. Right. right. It was a minor subdivision versus a major okay. subdivision. So there is a scale. So what we'll do is we'll come up with a quick uh, thing and try to get this done. And the reason is it's important. We, Shelley and I went to a meeting today with the Board of Taxation. We found out that the borough, along with every other municipality in the state, is required to submit updated tax maps every year. Oh. Uh, and we've never done that. You should know that for your other municipalities, because they weren't there, and they shouldn't be there. And I yelled about that, too. And, uh, but you can go back. And everybody has to do this. Because if you don't update your tax maps, when people go to sell their properties, and all this kind of stuff, it all, it all shows up. So when was the last time we updated our tax map? Well, we did it back in, in 09 or 10. That's the board that's out there. We'll right. take a look at that. And we did zoning back then. So it's probably been in 12 years. You know. So now we have to do it every year? But, it, but you, all you're doing is doing the added and omission, yeah. those kind of things. He's either moving a line or adding a line. You know, he's doing that kind of stuff. Like the new block and lots that are going to be created by this uh, uh, and who town. Does, who does this? Sort of so the tax assessor. Is something the engineer will do? So it starts off with the tax assessor. He does all the block and lots. The planning board approves all this stuff, and it becomes a condition of someone's approval. Then, we, but that's where the, the where we dream we drop the ball. We need to sit. The planning board needs to send it to the borough engineer, who's also our planning board engineer, and, and gets it done simultaneously. And then once a year, you're all digitized at this point, right? We're all electronic. So well, if it's electronic, here's just what we have now. Moving along, read it. Say, sixty-five dollars per lot for minor subdivisions, three lots or less. And then for major subdivisions, $45 per lot for 1 to 25 lots, $40 per lot for 26 or more lots, $800 per commercial site plan, and $1,000 per condominium site plan, plus $20 per unit for residential condominium projects. I mean, that's not terrible, other than the first one was a little low. Until we but see, if we were collecting that money right now, we would have some of the money to pay Oh, the five thousand dollars. Oh, the setup stuff. Yeah. We have collected some of it. We collected, but it goes into planning board escrow. It just sits there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to screw that money. Yes, please. All right. So the, all I'm saying is, is that we need to approve you to do this. I'd like to see us get these tax maps updated by the end of the year, if that's possible. Look at that face. <laughs> Come on. He's got more stuff to pass on. He can work with us. Well. Not the same. So let's just be clear. Everything revolves around taxes. I'm sorry. We have got to collect the money properly. We don't collect, that was what this, this meeting was today. We were there for four hours. And for four hours, the county, you know what they said to us? They want their money. She made that very clear. That they want their cut, they want their cut. And they hold the municipalities responsible for us to do our jobs. And uh, they, they credit back, they deduct, they make it very clear where our taxes you know, so we have to do it. So this, this tax map is a big part of us being this charged correctly. Right. There's a few questions we have. One was with that, not that one. The one was vacated. Yeah. You just vacated an area and then dedicated to each of the individual. So homes. our attorney at the time, Mr. Wood, said that there's a book at the, at the county, uh, the county where that is a vacate bot book. 
Well, all we had to do was vacate it because it's assumed that those paid those streets, that that, that that area goes automatically to the property owners. And that's what I believe we did. We just simply marked on that we're never putting that road on. And then the people did it. I'm almost positive Brian did an added assessment to that and saying, okay, you own another 25 feet. We have no proof of that. So that's, as long as that's what you want the tax map updated to that, we can do that. But we thought, well, I've, I've heard stuff today, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at that. How, what mechanism do we have right. to say this guy got 25 feet, this guy? Because what we did, we did a resolution, we did, an, we did something to, to All vacate. All said was drunk vacate this rectangular area. It didn't say who we vacated say who to? Was going to. When we did, See, I remember when we did Gina Baum coming in here and signing for it. I remember, what were the names of all the people who came in and had signed for it? When we did, we made everybody come in and sign when they, they took the property. They had to agree. You would have a record of that, that we can do it that way. We just did the yeah. paperwork, the paperwork we had just said this area was vacated. When we did the, we did the sidewalks, when we vacated, we vacated the land between had, each property. Owner. Yes. Some didn't want it because they already had their fence. You're under, you were there. They yes. didn't want their fence. Mm -hmm. So you went to them. Yeah. And if we can show that, there's no further action that you take. And we don't have to file a deed when we do that, correct? Just a legal description. Yeah. Well, that it should be free yeah. property. Well, we'll have to so file how are we going to be able to? Well, there, everything, everything we do is by clearance. That's everything right. is a resolution. That's why I said getting tax stuff. Everything's a resolution. Be a problem. Everything's a resolution. All right, we're going to find it. And I'm almost positive that, that Brian has right. records of this when we did it. Because he, he was the one who came up with the amount. That would make it a lot easier. He taxed them, didn't he? He taxed everybody. Because yeah. everybody had to agree that we were going to pay an extra $100 a month. Or $100 a year. A year, not a month. I'm sorry. Yes. $100 a year. All right, so that's it. Right. Right. That sounds good. All right. Little issues like that. that all right, property maintenance lanes. I guess we have a few more grants guy. I have one. Transfer resolution. Shelly's got some money to move around in, uh, in November. And then salary ordinance. That's just Shelly making sure that we're paying everybody based on the salary ordinance. We do it a little backwards, but it's okay. We should do the salary at the beginning of the year. We do it okay. Uh, let's just move on to payment of bills. Would someone like to make a motion to pay the monthly bills? I'll make a motion to pay the monthly bills. I'll second. Front motion by Ms. Passio, second by Mr. Sapiro. Roll call, please. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Farrell. Yes. And Mr. Sapiro. Yes. Before I to wrap. All right. Bill should be paid. Did anybody want to say anything? Did you have anything? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, real quick. October 28th. Microphone. Allowed. <laughs> October 28th. Uh, we have our green team fundraiser, which is going to be a costume party from 6 to 10. Uh, it will be at the VFW. It's $35 a ticket, so please come out and support the green team. October 28th through November 5th is early voting at the Senior Center. Uh, October 30th is the flu shots in the gym from 10 to 1. And, of course, uh, we have our Halloween Borough um, party, which is a costume party. And that is on Halloween night, October 31st, at the Field House from 6 to 8. We will have food, refreshments. Um, did you ever talk to Tara about I did dedication? talk to her. She, she wants, wants to do that before? No. She, she wants to do it. She's thinking about doing it at the beginning of the RY. Okay. okay. When everybody's at that back. time. Of, Fine. Yeah, in April. It takes, it takes some pressure. Yeah, so that's, that's what she's thinking of doing. Um, and then uh, the tree lighting and all of that will be on Sunday, November 26th, and the parade going through the town bringing Santa Claus. Um, the blood drive yet, Rotary Club, is December 29th, at the Harry Williams, I guess, right? And uh, I think that's it. If anybody has any questions, you can call me. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Sapiro, anything? Uh, uh, baseball, softball, wrapping up there, ball, baseball. Okay. When they're done, make sure because we'll get rid of that spot. Okay. So as soon as we know, right, Harry, you want to pull that out of there. All right. right. And we might have to shut water off out there. Did you see we got two uh, hoses out there for the two small fields? They were donated by the sprinkler company. Uh, they ran two spigots out there, so the coaches can get the fields out. Uh, did you have anything? Nope. Oh, okay. No, just one thing. Uh, Mark, what we have with the lighting down at the, the green acres? I heard it's done. It's done. It's I still that I can confirm if it's working at night, though. It is. I already got a neighbor calling and saying it's too bright. <laughs> so what's his name? The guy ran on the corner, and Bush Schmidt, sends me a picture. It's too bright. So he wants us to lower it, the, the wattage. 
I, I want to ask you about it. I don't think it's wattage. It's an LED light, isn't it? I mean, is it, is it, it's a downward light. I'll, I'll drive by. Put a shield if anybody, you yeah. live by that. Where drive by and see if it's too bright. But Schmidt thinks it's too bright. Is it just one? Maybe we can plant a tree. How about five duct tape? Yeah. Five, <laughs> how many is he saying? Just, just the one, one. The one at the very entrance of the park. It's up the mark. There's street lights out there, isn't there? There's street lights on, 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 on the end of the cul-de-sac. I have the new one in front of my house. That I love it brighter. You like it brighter? Yeah. He, he didn't like it. So, <laughs> all right. Well, they, I told him we looked at. Um, that's what, yeah, the lights are done. Yeah. That's great. So you haven't got any final bills or anything? Like that. Okay. Well, they made some money on that deal, man. That was a, they, they, they hit us. Okay. Anything else? No, right up there. Okay. Uh, did you have anything else, Shelly? Thank you. Thank you very, very much. We appreciate it. Well deserved. We do appreciate it. Mark, did you have anything you want to wait till the other report before your next council meeting? So you got a lot going on. All right. Harry, do you want to tell us anything? Progress. You know, I want to thank Harry. His, his, all these young men that we've hired have done a great job on the Black Horse Plant. Did anybody notice mm -hmm. that the trees all got cleaned up, the mulch got done? They were really doing a lot of catching up. Uh, they're going to be going up on the second floor, cleaning out all of the um, uh, papers up there for the school district. The school districts, obviously. You know, what happened with that? that? They're, they're going to take it over. We just have to clear it up. Fox office did send us, uh, or sending us a letter, and it's already confirmed, that we are allowed to use the third floor. It's considered a mezzanine based on the original application of the building was built. So as long as we have separation. Yeah, you never saw it? As long as we have separation. <laughs> as long as we have separation from the heaters, there's a minimum separation with paint line, paint stripes, nothing can be put there. I got it from Dirk. You believe it? I had to call him twice. Oh, I got it. I'll make sure you get a copy. <laughs> and, uh, so Harry's going to clean the attic up, and he's going to move the shelves in there and do that. It doesn't mean we still don't want to scan everything that's, that we can scan. Because some of the stuff is still planning for stuff that's in that, that office. And, uh, yeah. I have a sore subject, but the RC park. Uh, You're done, right? Yeah. Proper. Yeah, yeah. 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 How are you going to get all the stuff out of the woods down there? Just okay, it's what we got to work on next. Okay. But it's Georgia right. button, the electric Georgia button, you can get it out. I'll purchase one of them. I'll purchase you. Right. Oh, uh, <laughs> rent a Georgia button. We don't rent a Georgia button. Hold on. Picture it's a gas power. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Miller. One thing I learned on him, many things, one thing, he don't like it. Rent yeah, rent. In rent. one day, two days. <laughs> Down the no. <laughs> so like when I pour concrete and I'm not out in the field, like I did high high school, the concrete truck poured it, you drive it like a little a lot like a motorcycle, dump it, and then you can go back and forth. So it works pretty well. As long as you know, I don't know how level that is, but yeah, that's an issue. We have to find a track one or a track one. And anything else? Go fellas. Go fellas. Chief? Good. You know, I want to thank the chief. Does everyone knows this? I don't know if everybody knows. There is no police chief like Bill Sam Paulson. Say that. I, let me just tell you. I know that. I know you guys, but let me just tell you what he did today. <laughs> he, he took over people's dog licenses. You know, he made sure the people who had dog licenses registered their dogs. It's insane that the chief of police is running around making sure that people register dogs. Now, I will say, many years ago, if you remember, the chief arrested uh -huh. a guy. He arrested someone uh -huh. for their dog license. What no, I didn't. It was a yes. warrant. <laughs> <laughs> he canceled a warrant. I was nice, too. <laughs> he was nice. He said, like he said come up, or you're going to get arrested. Warrant. I was teaching a new guy some book. I said, here's how you talk to me. And she thanked me when I brought I'm actually saying, stage. no one, that is, you know, the fact that he's helping out with code enforcement and the CCS is great. Uh, anything from you guys? The, the, the peanut gallery? The uh, tax sale, everything went except for two properties. And which two? Uh, car wash. Yeah, we I spoke to him. Did he come in and pay? No, we gave him until tomorrow, but they know then all the current year's taxes get added to that lien. I could call him again. No, it's you know he can call. Every time, time he's been told now. Okay. All right. Uh, we are going to get our screens working, and our, our meetings will be video. We're going to get there. So that uh, is made it. Real quick, with the tax there, if there's somebody interested in having us assign those, so we're not left with them. 
Uh, if we do that, we have to do it by resolution. I believe it's a, it's a resolution. Uh, well, how much money are you talking about? I thought you said it was only like $700. I don't know. It's thousands. Now, it's, if they don't redeem it when they said they're coming in, anything that's open this year is going to get added to it. Because they have to pay. They paid their taxes to be able to be set heard in front of the planning board. And now they haven't paid. So that will be Well, I called them. You called them. Do what you got to do. They, they, that's that's what the law them. says. We'll follow the law. But if you, there's no problem, we can assign it to someone. Okay. So this, everyone, this is the, well, it's the car wash. It's public information. He came and got approval to build your car wash. I did speak to him. He's having some issues with his partner. But we obviously want the taxes to be paid where it goes into until the Okay, do what you got to do. I mean, unless you want to call me. I don't know what you to, it, How much can you tell them? Okay. They this told me they were either walking, they were going to bring it in face to face on Friday, or they put the mail to get by tomorrow. So, so I don't know if they're. Well, let me know. If it doesn't come in by the end of the week, let's, let's do the assignment. Well, the assignment has to be done. I'll put the resolution on if that's what you Oh, so for the next meeting? For the next meeting. Okay. okay. All right. Is there anything else? All right, good and well. This portion of the meeting is open to the public. Anyone wish to speak, please come to the microphone, state your name and address. Seeing no one, is there a motion to close the public portion? I'll make, I'll make that motion. Second by Mr. Lottenstein. Second by? Uh, second. Mr. Cassio. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Uh, All right, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Farrell. Second by Mr. Severo. All in favor? Aye. Uh, adjourn at 652. Uh,